There are many galaxies of different shapes and sizes in the universe around us today. Now, roughly half are gas-poor, elliptical-shaped galaxies with few new stars forming today, whereas the other half are gas-rich, spiral and irregular-shaped galaxies with lots of new star formation activity. Now, observations have shown that the gas-poor galaxies are most often found near the centers of rich galaxy clusters, whereas the spirals spend most of their life in solitude. However, observations of the deep and very far away universe have also shown that when the universe was roughly half of its present age, things were very different. Back then, only about one in 10 galaxies was a gas poor one. So the question is, where did all today's gas poor galaxies come from? Apparently, there must have been some kind of transformation process. But because galaxy evolution takes place over billions of years, astronomers have so far not been able to see it live. New observations with Hubble by an international team led by Luca Cortesi of Cardiff University, United Kingdom, provide one of the best examples to date of this metamorphosis. Well, we were looking at the Abel Cluster 2657 and we realized that uh, this galaxy was falling into the cluster center at a velocity of approximately 3.5 million kilometers per hour. Abel 2667's enormous gravitational field is generated by the combined contribution of the cluster's dark matter, hot gas and hundreds of galaxies. As the galaxy plows through the cluster, its gas and stars are being stripped away by the hot plasma in the cluster, which can reach temperatures as high as 10 to 100 million degrees. Also contributing to this destructive process are the tidal forces exerted by the cluster. These are just like the tidal forces of the Moon and Sun, which push and pull the Earth's oceans. Both processes, the tidal forces and the aptly named ram pressure stripping, resulting from the action of the hot cluster gas, resemble those affecting comets in our solar system. For this reason, scientists have nicknamed this peculiar spiral, with its tail, the Comet Galaxy. We see a unique galaxy that has been transformed by the fact that it's falling toward the cluster center. And what we see exactly, it's a kind of a spiral galaxy with lots of gas. And we see a trail of stars, of blue forming stars, and uh, uh, also around those stars, some kind of wispy uh, gas stripped away by the, the fall. Furthermore, millions of now homeless stars have been snatched away from their mother galaxy, which will lead it to age prematurely. Even though its mass is slightly larger than that of the Milky Way, the spiral will inevitably lose all its gas and dust, and hence its chance of generating new stars later, so it will probably become a gas-poor galaxy left with an old population of red stars. However, in the midst of all this destruction, the cluster's strong tidal forces have triggered a baby boom of star formation. Hubble's sharp eyes have caught other spectacular effects of Abel 2667's immense mass. The giant bluish arc seen just off-center is the magnified and distorted image of a distant background galaxy seen through the gravitational lens formed by the tremendous mass concentration of the cluster. At the cluster's center, another rare feature can be seen. The vivid blue light from millions of stars created in a so-called cooling flow. Some of the hot cluster gas is cooling in a filamentary structure as it falls into the cluster's core, setting off the birth of lots of bright blue stars outshining their environment. This may be the clearest picture of this phenomenon yet. By combining the visible, infrared and X-ray views from Hubble, Spitzer, Chandra, the VLT and Keck, we can see that this discovery adds a new brushstroke to a painting where galaxies are being slowly shaped by their violent interactions with the cluster environment. Although there are many discoveries still to come, the emerging elements shed new light on the painting's mysterious nature and are revealing some of its hidden wonders. This is Dr. J signing off for the Hubblecast. Once again, nature has surprised us beyond our wildest imagination.
Welcome to the Hubblecast. Now, when we look around us in the universe with powerful telescopes, essentially all the light we see comes to us from billions and billions of stars. And these stars are gathered together in galaxies. So galaxies are essentially just huge collections of stars, gas, and dust. And they come in an enormous variety of different shapes and sizes. Now, today I'd like to talk to you about one particular galaxy, and that's NGC 1672, located in the Dorado or Swordfish constellation. Now here is a spectacular, brand new image from the NASA ESA Hubble Space Telescope. As you can see straight away, it is a spiral galaxy. In fact, it is a prototypical example of a so-called barred spiral galaxy, and it is viewed nearly face-on. Barred spirals differ from normal spiral galaxies in that their arms do not twist all the way into the center. Instead, they are attached at two ends of a straight bar of stars. Four principal arms extend from the center and give NGC 1672 a rather symmetric appearance. Eye-catching dust lanes extend away from the nucleus and follow the inner sides of the spiral arms. Hot young blue stars are seen in vigorous star-forming clusters in the galaxy's spiral arms. Delicate curtains of dust partially obscure the light of the stars behind them and colour them red. NGC 1672 is almost like a sister galaxy to our own galactic home, the Milky Way. The Milky Way also has a huge bar of stars, which was recently seen in great detail by the infrared eyes of the NASA Spitzer Space Telescope. The two galaxies also have in common that their spiral arms are quite loosely wrapped. Now, astronomers believe that barred spiral galaxies have a unique mechanism that channels gas from the disk inwards towards the center of the galaxy. And it is thought that this gas also makes a really good meal for a putative supermassive black hole that sits at the center. Moreover, bars are thought to be quite short-lived. So the big question is, will non-barred spiral galaxies develop a bar in the future, or have they hosted a bar in the past that has since died out? Behind the galaxy, several more distant galaxies are seen. They are colored caramel by the dust in NGC 1672. Also seen in the image are a few bright, much closer foreground stars from our own Milky Way. Astronomers are still puzzled about how bars actually form. They could be the result of instabilities in the disk that harbors the spiral arms, or they could develop in the aftermath of galactic collisions. In any case, the formation and evolution of bars is still a matter of debate. This is Dr. J, signing off for the Hubblecast. Once again, nature has surprised us beyond our wildest imagination. Welcome to the Hubblecast. Globular clusters are the homesteaders of our Milky Way galaxy because they were born during our galaxy's formation. They are compact swarms of typically hundreds of thousands of stars that are being held together by gravity. Now astronomers have long thought that globular clusters experience a single baby boom of star formation at the beginning of their lives and then settle into a rather quiet existence. New observations by the NASA ESA Hubble Space Telescope is showing that this idea may be too simple. The Hubble analysis of the massive globular cluster NGC 2808 is providing evidence that instead of having one baby boom of star formation, star birth went boom boom boom, creating three generations of stars early on in the cluster's life. We were really shocked by the results. I mean, when we saw for the first time the CMD, we said, wow! Uh, because, I mean, we were not expecting anything like that. But the picture that we had in mind was that uh, global clusters were simple stellar systems, simple because they are stars which have been formed all together at the same time, from the same material, that is, with the same composition, and stars which are all at the same distance. I think this is going to change our view of, of uh, globular clusters and uh, of course by, by I mean, 
in, in this sense, it's a, a cornerstone result. The astronomers used Hubble's advanced camera for surveys to measure the brightness, seen along this axis, and the colour of the cluster stars, seen here, with blue to the left and red to the right. The measurements showed three distinct populations, with each successive generation appearing slightly bluer. This colour difference suggests that successive generations contain a slightly different mix of some chemical elements. We don't really know how it happened, but it may well be that the cluster form a first generation that can expel a lot of material that only later fall down forming a second generation of stars with completely different chemical properties. That may just an explanation and may be consistent with the fact that NGC 2808 is one of the most massive clusters in the galaxy, so able to retain all this gas. Astronomers commonly believed that globular clusters produced only a single stellar generation, because the energy from that first batch of stars cleared out the remaining gas needed for more stars. But a hefty cluster like NGC 2808, which is two to three times more massive than the typical globular clusters, may have enough gravity to hold on to that gas. Although the astronomers have searched only two globular clusters for multiple stellar generations, they say this may be a typical occurrence in other massive clusters as well. Now, no one is taking the radical step of suggesting that previous work on other clusters is no longer valid. But this discovery does show that the study of stellar populations in globular clusters may be heading in a new direction. The team plans to use ESO's Very Large Telescope in Chile to study the chemical composition of NGC 2808. This may offer further evidence that the stars were formed at different times, and it may yield clues as to how they formed. The team will also use Hubble to hunt for multiple generations in about 10 more hefty globular clusters. This is Dr. J signing off for the Hubblecast. Once again, you've guessed it, nature surprised us beyond our wildest imagination.